Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, we are back uh, at API Days. Uh, we are in the uh, technical track, and we're opening this track with uh, Johas uh, from uh, DBS Bank. Uh, so uh, uh, yeah, we will talk about uh, democrati democratizing uh, data decisions with self-service tools. Uh, so we invite you, Johas, to come on stage. Are you able to come on stage? Hello, Johas. How are you? Hi. Hi, Mehdi. I'm good. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Yojas. I'm speaking uh, from Singapore. I work there. And uh, I'm very glad to join ABIDS New York today. Uh, today, I'm going to speak about uh, democratizing uh, data using self-service tools. And i um, very excited to start it. Yeah. So please share your screen with us, your slides. And, uh, and yes, the stage is yours. Sure. Thank you. Um, yeah, just want to check uh, whether my screen is visible. Yeah. Everything is great. See you in 20 minutes. Thank you. Uh, so um, in DBS Bank, I'm uh, official, uh, officially as a technical trainer. And I conduct these workshops uh, on different um, technical tools that we have uh, for the business units to understand, uh, to have a hands-on on these tools. and. Uh, even from the business side, how the tech industry uh, is evolving and how to cope up with that. That is something is my specialization. And at the same time, I have key skill for data visualization tools and we use a lot of APIs and other services uh, to execute that. And uh, why are we talking about data democratization today? Uh, I'm gonna share one small story for that. So in a traditional approach, when any uh, business unit in your organization was looking for a data or looking for any uh, implementation, the very first thing they used to do is to request for that data to a uh, business uh, BA or uh, executive. And they used to send this request to the IT department uh, to get uh, this data developed uh, from the business point of view. And the IT department used to work on it, spend some time and develop this uh, so that the business unit can uh, consume this data. This is a traditional approach and it, it really works well uh, when we have um, you know, uh, dedicated time to develop uh, and deploy these projects. Uh, what makes it more challenging is in an agile uh, way and especially in today's day when everyday technology is changing and even business requirements are changing every day. So how to cope up with that? It also leads to a lot of disappointment to the IT department as well when they, they spend like one week or two weeks to execute something and the next day uh, no one is going to utilize that or uh, the requirements are changing and the business is evolving. So uh, that adds some disappointment and at the same time, it's time consuming as well to cope up with new changes. So uh, what, uh, what I'm going to share here is like to give a direct access to the business unit on uh, to the data platform where you have all the technologies uh, that your organization can use. Uh, it's a very technical uh, uh, tools that we have, but how to make it really understandable to the business and how a business can directly access to this platform and get their data on the fly rather than relying on the uh, IT department people or the other uh, people that, that, that are going to uh, deliver this project to the business uh, side. So how exactly you are going to do? Uh, I'm going to go uh, in depth, uh, like different uh, methodologies for that. And there will be three takeaways uh, from today's session. And these uh, three points are very important to execute this uh, conceptually. Uh, so there is one business case that I came across when I was working in different projects with different teams. So normally, any tech team uh, to develop any project, they tentatively take uh, one month for data mapping and uh, you know discovery, then data transformation, dashboard development. Then there are different phases like SAT, UAD, and prod, and then we get the access. So this is from the financial point of view, like in any uh, bank when, or even in any other projects, you can uh, implement the similar methodologies. And uh, tentatively, uh, it takes that much of time. And 
when we uh, implement this, when we give access to the business uh, to directly develop their dashboards, uh, it reduces the time uh, to 45 to 50 percent. Uh, at this moment, uh, this is the current number that I'm um, sharing the real number that from the uh, team that I work with. But in general, uh, these numbers can be achievable like 80% uh, to 90% as well. Uh, it depends uh, how efficient is uh, the platform and how easily people are really working on it. And uh, I will explain in detail like how exactly we can actually reach to that level as well. And uh, yeah, so this is the change uh, that happens. To explain in detail, I, I am going to share this analogy with you where, uh, for example, there is an application team and there is a platform team. Uh, so when uh, application team, I'm going to relate to the normal uh, restaurant and platform team is something like a cooking studio. So when you go to the restaurant and you look for your food, uh, you get a menu card and inside that you get your dishes to select. Uh, what uh, what you're going to get and uh, who is going to prepare is the chef who prepares your dish. And when you go to the cooking studio, uh, what you get is the access to the uh, backstage, which is your cooking uh, studio. And there you get all the ingredients. Uh, you can be the chef. You can prepare your dish and you can, in fact, uh, customize it based on what you are really looking for and what is your flavor. So uh, how how to understand the ingredients and how to really prepare your dish, nobody really knows from scratch, but there will be other people like the experts who will guide you with uh, explaining what this ingredient is for or how you're going to prepare the dish, etc. So that you feel confident and you enjoy the process of preparing your own dish. So these are two different uh, methodologies. Uh, and. We are going to uh, go deeper in the cooking studio analogy here. So like how the platform works. So in a, uh, in a usual uh, data culture platform, we follow four, four A's here. Uh, ask, acquire, analyze, act, and outcome. So uh, when we ask, uh, ask business about define their problems and what are the challenges they are facing, uh, from that phase, uh, the IT department and the other departments start acquiring the information. Uh, they design the solution and then they analyze it. When we analyze, we come to the different conclusion and then uh, business takes action on that. Uh, when we take these actions and when we know the outcome which is going to benefit the business, uh, then the, we consider it as a successful uh, deployment. Uh, what happens sometimes, uh, things are changing and uh, uh, business is changing as well. The moment we feel that, uh, no, this is not the solution that I'm looking for, so we can again change the track and we can ask the same question, acquire, analyze and act and we can reuse this uh, process to uh, enhance the process, like enhance the uh, outcome that you had re received uh, previously. And uh, in the central platform, uh, you can keep this uh, solution uh, as a repository for someone else to make use of that. So that uh, when we are developing or uh, working on any project, at the same time, somebody else might be working on a similar kind of project. But by having the central platform, uh, it actually gives you access to uh, visualize which team is working on, which kind of data is available, and uh, some transparency so that you can actually uh, make use of these existing solutions as well. So that's the advantage. And I will explain how exactly this will work in the practical scenarios. So in the data platform, uh, basically we have these building blocks where we ingest data from different sources. Data is coming from different departments. It goes through various layers and uh, we have a governance where we can actually uh, see the metadata of uh, the entire data sets coming in the uh, central platform. So when you have access for this, uh, you actually can see this is my data, but there are other teams who are working on different data as well. Uh, and what is the structure for that? And then you can reach out to those key persons uh, via these uh, main uh, platform leads. So in the data platform, we also have uh, different consumers, like, uh, for example, data scientists or data engineers, um, other uh, data stewards. All these people are the consumers and, and they know that the data is available in the central platform, how they are going to access this and how they know which one, which data is actually um, 
uh, useful for them. For that, we have uh, education system. For example, uh, in cooking studio where you get to learn how to prepare this dishes or understand the ingredient. Here, this education system or the center of excellence is going to help uh, all respective consumers about uh, what is available in the platform, how they can make use of that. And uh, through, because the platform is quite vast, we have 80 to 90 tools uh, in that. And microservices plays and the APIs plays a really vital role to communicate between these uh, different uh, tools uh, to churn out that data uh, on the fly. So this is uh, really important. And then they get trainings and they uh, there is a self-service portal where they can next time log in by themselves and prepare their own dish, like whatever the business is looking for. Uh, then uh, the tech innovation that propels data democratization is the governance and strategies, uh, tools, infrastructure, data and insight. And uh, these are the key points that uh, that is a building block for this. Uh, data visualization softwares and data federation softwares, cloud storage, self-service BI applications and e-learning and workshops are very important uh, for this. Some of the um, tools, if you are uh, really looking for like uh, what exactly we can make use of for the self-service not every tool is feasible uh, but there is always way to find out based on what is the requirement and the demand in your organization what are the existing tools and then um, making combination of the open source as well as enterprise tools as well as you can even develop something uh, in-house and make use of these technologies to execute this uh, what has changed by democratizing, democratizing data is the culture change. Uh, and because of this culture change and the adoption, uh, you can get your data way more faster. The numbers which I showed is just 50%, but when we have proper things established, we can actually achieve up to 80 to 90%. Uh, this uh, also helps you to avoid silos. Uh, like it gives you full access to the central platform where you can see metadata of all the organization and you can uh, even take your uh, repository, which is a central repository and make use of existing solutions uh, to uh, speed up the uh, project deployments. Uh, Self-service platform is very vital here because that allows you to get understanding of this uh, data platform. And uh, from the business side, data is not that complex. That feeling is very important, even if we all are aware about uh, like how important it is to get this data on the fly. But it's equally important to have this culture change where we see even business things comfortable, uh, comfortably for this data platform. And they don't think uh, this uh, data is like really complex that I have to really rely on IT uh, department to execute that. And uh, of course, nothing comes very easy. Your plan is to execute uh, this uh, project in a very uh, straightforward manner, but there are challenges to implement that. Uh, the very first thing is like when uh, your business uh, there is a possibility like if somebody uh, even after attending workshops and trainings they uh, don't understand it properly there might be challenge in that and it might lead to uh, wrong decision for your uh, project as well or the company so to avoid this kind of thing the most important thing is you go for more and more trainings uh, till you really clear your doubts and it is a similar thing even for the technical people when they don't understand the business requirement they are going to deliver something which is really not fitting the solution is something similar and uh, but it's on the business side that they are going for the technical solution and for uh, the other challenge they have is because we are exposing this data uh, to all the people uh, it comes with uh, risk and security like what if uh, somebody uh, uh, gets access for another data and they misuse it or uh, what if the data integrity is not there or, and we lose data in between uh, and there is no track but there are solutions for this and uh, for example when we talk about data lineage it is um, in the, even from the data engineering stack is so important like uh, on the same project there are 20 people working on that 
and we don't know who is working on which portion and when they have made these changes. So uh, we have a governance where we capture this information, uh, where the last person left the session and when the next person, person started development on that. And you can always trace it back and always have uh, security for your data and lineage for your data as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, the key takeaway uh, from today is the three takeaway that I wanted to share is the culture change. To implement this, we need a really high um, adoption uh, ratio from the business side towards tech side. And uh, to have um, self-service as a main motor, like everybody can make use of this technology uh, and very easily as well. And a center of excellence or education system, which enables uh, the business side to uh, understand all these technology and the platform on the way. So uh, this is my information. If anybody wants to know in depth or any practical use cases, you can always reach out to me on LinkedIn or drop me an email. I'll be very happy to have uh, any brainstorming uh, discussion on that. And uh, Mehdi, I pass it to you. If anyone have any questions uh, on this topic or they want to know more about it, I'm very happy to answer those. Yeah, thank you very much. We have a question about um, the the governance of it. So uh, how do you really make things serve service respecting all the access control and uh, governance rules? Um, uh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, can you repeat this question? No. So how can you really make things serve service respecting um, uh, governance rules and uh, access control? Yes, so uh, to make it self-service, we have to pick right tools uh, for the platform. When we talk about platform, there are data ingestion uh, layer. For data ingestion, we can make use of, uh, for example, AWS S3 could be the storage, uh, and we can ingest all the data there. And uh, after that, it goes to different layer like computation, ETL, data visualization. So while implementing that, we can pick the right tool, which is a self-service tool and which is easy to use from the business point of view. So it's not highly technical. And uh, to uh, these choices really change uh, everything. It changes the game. Like when we are really working on a Java stack uh, or full stack uh, development, uh, we need technical skill set. But when we pick a self-service tool, for example, for visualization, if I pick Tableau, it is uh, really uh, easy and handy for anybody to uh, just drag and drop few things and develop their own dashboard or report. Uh, it, uh, it needs uh, really less uh, involvement of uh, IT side. Uh, this is just an example. Uh, but yeah, by doing the, uh, this combination and having a governance uh, for governance, I would recommend like Colibri is a really nice tool, uh, which gives you lineage as well. And uh, it gives, uh, gives you visibility for metadata and your own data sets. So which is uh, also a quite nice tool to uh, make use of that. Yeah. We have another question. Do you think privacy regulation will change the impact on democratizing data uh, decisions? Uh, it has a direct impact. I agree with that because uh, when we are changing any security rules and when we know that uh, certain data, because it exposes uh, to the business side, uh, so it is very important to have these enforcement points on every single tool. Uh, if, if we have 20 set of different tools and we know that how users are going to access. So when we have these enforcement points there uh, from the data security point of view, it will always enable you uh, to your one, like your ID, uh, whichever data set is uh, you know, accessible for you. So that gives uh, more uh, secure environment for anybody to access. So we have a question. What do you think about self-service data lakes? Is it a good practice? Uh, OK, so uh, data warehouse, data lake, and data house. I mean, even if we consider any of these environments, uh, self-service is a very good idea over here. But there are challenges, because uh, when we are implementing ETL portion, and if somebody is not uh, aware about the concepts, 
it could be challenging because uh, we are creating the schemas and we are uh, finding the relationship be between different tables at the same time. So from the business side, it could be a little bit challenging, but with the help, as I explained, like we have these trainings uh, really focusing on different areas. So when they go and join these sessions, they feel comfortable for that and they start exploring and slowly, like uh, it's a culture change, like it will take down the line one year for your entire team to feel comfortable on, uh, you know, creating their own data models by themselves and uh, use it as self-service. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I take it over here in, a, in a, from the questions, but it's true. I was talking to a, a recent uh, chief digital officer, and they were having a data lake where the only KPI they had was the size of the data lake. You know how much data they could put in, instead of having a number of good decisions that were being made, number of application consuming the data, or number of business insight that could have been uh, uh, made directly th through this. So, so. Uh, what are the good, let's say, KPIs uh, uh, you would advise for a, for uh, let's say a good uh, governance uh, uh, um, policy about democratizing data decisions? What would you follow? What metrics? Uh, would you follow? This, this is this is a challenge for almost everybody and all the organizations, right? Because data is increasing and we are more greedy for data. So storage is really really important and how you're going to scale up with that. So cloud is the solution for that, right? Because uh, if we are going to store everything on-prem, it is going to be a problem. And especially in the in the day-to-day -day life when uh, sometimes we need uh, to execute one program, we need a uh, larger architecture. And sometimes we want to shrink it uh, to the only two nodes or three nodes. Sometimes we need five nodes. And to have this, um, you know, uh, on a self-service mode, like, Today I'm working on two node architecture and I'm, uh, my data is uh, you know, satisfying the latency that I want and I want to see everything on a fast pace. So the moment my data increases, my performance also increases from the visualization point of view. So uh, it is so important to scale up uh, from the back end, uh, the, the infra as well, as well as if it is on cloud, uh, you have to make use of um, more instances and so that it is much more faster and you see larger data set uh, on the fly. So I hope I answered this question, but yeah, this is a very tricky question to answer, like how we are going to accommodate the whole data in uh, one go, yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, do you have specific roles or skills that you, uh, when you do trainings, like do you give certificates? Do people come like data engineer or privacy engineer or, you know, like, do you have any gamification or say or certification program to help uh, uh, colleagues to improve and be recognized in the in the company as decision makers on data? Yes. So we have uh, some certification and tags like a data hero, and uh, these are uh, like a champions. So from every department and from uh, whenever they complete any course, they get a badge. And uh, when they complete the full course, like there are 20 different technologies. So if when you get trained on every single module, uh, then you uh, you are a champion for that. Like, and then you can uh, even encourage other people or guide them. And that is how the culture changes slowly. And uh, then you can you feel comfortable as well. So this is the approach that we are following and also made it even much more easier, like even from the training perspective. So when I come for training, uh, full day, I can't spend my whole day uh, conducting this session and the next day again. So I even made it e-learning. So I recorded the session. So on the fly, anybody can access that as well. So that also that, that's also a kind of uh, automation at the same time, uh, self-service for the trainings. <laughs> yep, it totally makes sense. So we are uh, exactly at, at the time we, we, we had planned. Thank you very much, Johas. And, and again, so if we know more about what you do, where we can find more information or reach you? Uh, I, I would prefer LinkedIn and I will reach out personally to discuss and uh, provide all the information, uh, whatever questions you have. Perfect. Thank you very much, Johas. Have a good one. Have a good day. And now.